Greetings Composers. So I'm going to show you how uh, to export a MIDI file from a notation program like Sibelius or Finale or MuseScore and then import that into a program like Logic or Ableton Live. And then what I'll be showing you is how to remove all the program uh, information like all the different controllers uh, that sometimes get exported with the MIDI file. So in the end, when we're in Logic, all we're left with are pitches and velocity. And so then you can add your own uh, expressive tools as you work in, uh, in something like Logic or Ableton Live. So the first thing we need to do is I'm in uh, Sibelius right now. So this is a wind ensemble score. Uh, so lots of many staves. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to export this. So I just go under File and go to Export. And I'm going to export as MIDI. And so uh, in terms of the sounds, we're not going to worry about this. So a different playback device is fine. Just setting it to general MIDI is OK. We're going to be applying our own sounds in Logic or Ableton Live or whatever DAW we're using. The MIDI file type is important. If you select type 0, what this will do is this will take all the staves, uh, all the music, and make one staff with all the MIDI. You do not want this. Uh, what we want is a type 1, and this will preserve each instrument on its own MIDI track. So that's what we want to use. Use type 1 when you're exporting your MIDI file. Uh, and that's about it. And then we just hit export. And I'm just going to put this on my desktop and save. Now I'm in Logic Pro. I've started a new session. So first thing I'll do here is just under File, go to Import, and then MIDI File. From here, here's the MIDI file. So a .mid, .mid file. I'm just going to import this into Logic. It's going to ask me if I want to also import the temp information. I'm going to say no. I'm going to control everything uh, within Logic. This might take a minute. And then you'll get this message uh, that maybe uh, you may or may not get this. I get this message because there's a lot of content that I don't have installed in Logic because I don't use a lot of the, the basic sounds from Logic and I don't want them taking up my hard drive space. So I'm going to hit cancel here. And you'll see this is why, for instance, so here's the first track I, I had that was part of the session. I'm just going to delete this track. Uh, there's also this track, which I'm not really sure what it is. Looks like there's some uh, maybe text information here. So I'm going to delete that track. And Oops. And so now I have piccolo, flute one, flute two, oboe one, oboe two, clarinet, etc. Um, you'll notice that in in this particular version of um, uh, a Logic, it's making this piccolo track a trumpet track. I don't know why it's doing that. Probably because maybe the trumpet is the first sound, making my flute two a tuba. This doesn't make any sense. But what I would just do is uh, I would change these names. Uh, manually, and then I would be using my own um, play instruments in here. So just click on that. So you'd want to do that with all your instruments, and you can color code the tracks and everything. So this is, uh, these are really long clips as you can see, right? So it's the whole piece as one single long MIDI clip. And if I double click on this, I can see the piano roll, and if I look at automation, I can see that there is a whole bunch of uh, a program change, note velocity, reverb, sustain, MIDI pan, MIDI volume. I don't want all this in here. Uh, like the MIDI volume, this is what, uh, when you're using like dynamics in, uh, in, like in this case, it's a Sibelius file. So all my fortissimos and pianos, pianos and crescendos and things like that. That's all coming across as MIDI volume. Uh, there's sustain. If I've used a sustain pedal, let's say on a piano or something like that. Uh, I want to get rid of all of this. So all I'm left with is the MIDI notes, note on, note off, and the velocities. If you do not want all of this velocity information, what I can do is if I, I'm going to click in the track here and hit Command-A, 
And now if I go to this velocity slider, if I just move this, it's just going to move all the, you can see it's like moving it in relation, right? But I want to get rid of all this info and just kind of make it flat. I'm going to hold down the option key on my computer and then click and drag. And I went all the way down to the bottom and back to the top. And now you can see everything is the same level. And so I can put this all at say 100 or something. And now uh, I could later on um, change that. So um, I have to say, I don't usually do this. Um, I usually uh, just keep the velocity information and then change it as I'm working with the instrument. Um, uh, so, but if you want to do this, that's okay too. And then you can also edit that. Um, so that takes a, you know, that's one step that you do need to do with each track. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to go to the event list and I can see that if I click on this little button right here. And if I actually go up one level, if I hit this little button here, this shows me uh, every track. And so what I want to do is I want to individually select each of these and I can just do that by, I think just double clicking on that. Yep. And that gets me uh, the piccolo. I can also just click on each track and you can see it changing, right? So if I go down here to this for clarinet one in B flat, there it's clarinet. If I go back up to piccolo, now it's changed it to piccolo. So, and now you can see that I can see that I'm looking at the notes, pro, any program changes, pitch bends, controller information, aftertouch. I'm gonna delete everything but the notes. So I'm gonna unselect the notes here and now hit Command A to select all of it and just hit the delete button. And now when I hit notes, I only see the notes. And so I want to do this with all the tracks. So I'm going to click on the next track. And again, just make sure you don't have notes selected. Command A, delete, next track, Command A, whoops. Click here, Command A, delete, and next track, Command A, delete. And just doing this with all the tracks. So this wouldn't take you too much time to do. And I can check if this worked or not. If I click on flute two here, just double click on the MIDI region. And if I go down to automation, right? So automation is off. Now I've turned it back on and you can see the only thing that's left here is note velocity. Uh, and all the other controls have been deleted. So that's really nice. So that's a really quick way of just getting rid of all that information uh, for each of these tracks. To do the same thing now in Ableton Live, all I have to do is I've created a new session in Ableton Live. I'm now in my finder. And so here's the MIDI file. I can just click and drag it. And so now all those MIDI tracks, right? You can see there are 38 independent MIDI tracks here. Now the first track was the, the track that was in here. I'm just going to delete that. Probably my next step would be to name each of these tracks. Uh, that would and that would correspond to the name here of the clip as well. So piccolo, flute one, flute two, oboe. So I would do that just by command R. So uh, we don't have an event list in Ableton Live, but there is a quick way that we can get rid of all that program information on each of these. Uh, tracks and clips. So I'm going to double clip, double click on the clip. And you can see down here is these are the MIDI notes way down the bottom are all, this is all the velocity. Again, if I wanted to get rid of just the velocity information, uh, so I've clicked down here in this window, I'll hit command A to select all the notes. And if I grab just one of these, bring it up and now everything is at the same level. So again, that's how to just get rid of that um, uh, velocity information that was uh, imported um, from Sibelius. Now, in order to delete other program information, I need to actually activate automation on this clip. So I'll go down here and click on this little button to see the envelopes. And then you can see that um, there's an option here that says show all envelopes. So if I select that, um, what will happen is if I don't have that selected, it's just going to show everything, right? If I go down here and say show only show adjusted envelopes, 
now it just shows me these one, two, three, four. And I want to get rid of all this. So what I can do is once I've set, selected, um, uh, so again, show all shows everything. If I change this to just show only adjusted envelopes, right? Now I can go into this clip area and control click or two finger tap and just say clear all envelopes. And now they're all gone. So uh, we just have to do this with all the tracks. Click on the track. Um, and now I can go here and just say clear all envelopes. Go to my flute two. Oops, make sure I have this set to, well, yeah, clear all envelopes, there we go. So click here. So you can see if I just click in the track, I'm just getting like I can quantize and stuff like that. I wanna make sure I click on, on this. So I'm looking at envelopes and now I can clear those envelopes. And so that's how we do the same thing now in Ableton Live. And again, if I go back to my first, this uh, Flute 1 track, you can see that uh, we don't have anything that's being modulated or changed. Uh, all, none of these have a, has a, a button next to it to show that there is any automation uh, or parameters that are being changed. So that's how we do this in Ableton Live.